Hi there folks, welcome to the next video in our SDL2 series. In this lesson, I'm going to take us a little bit back a step. We'll revisit OpenGL graphics programming in a later series or playlist. But what I want to do is go ahead and talk about our window and the surface behind the window. So we can start talking about pixels and how to manipulate things. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So what I've gone ahead and done is created a new project called Surfaces here. You'll notice that it's just a bare bones main.cpp file because I want to keep things simple in this series. And I have a program that's executable here. So let's just go ahead and navigate into that repo. And I'll open up the main file. And I'll get ready to compile this in just a moment. And if you want to just see the structure of this program, here we've created a window. We've initialized SDL. We've created a window. And here is our main application loop where we are also handling our event loop. So we can handle some things like moving the mouse, the SDL keys being pressed, or if we want to handle the scan code. And finally, we clean up our SDL program appropriately. So we haven't done really anything new here, but I'm just going to go ahead and run this application, compile it, and I'll show you the window that we have. And we can terminate it by hitting the X here. At this point, everything's ready to go, but the program's really not that interesting. And again, if you're following this series, you probably want to do interesting graphical stuff. So what I want to talk about is the SDL surface. And this is going to be how we're going to display images in SDL. Now we can talk about textures and some of these other things, but first we want to talk about just the raw pixels that go into the screen. So an easy way to do that is to demonstrate how to load an image and just paste it on the background of our window. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at SDL surface. So what SDL surface is, is it's a structure that contains a collection of pixels used in software blitting. So if we look at this a little bit closer, basically this is almost like an image format. Now there's many different image formats and allow me to draw here for a moment, such as .jpgs, .bmps, .ppm, .tga, .png, dot hmm is it gif or gif i'm not sure but anyway these are some of the image formats that you have and each of these have some of these associated attributes like width and height one that you might not be familiar with is pitch so if i'm just thinking about an image here with some sort of character here and if i'm just going across each of the individual rows here and drawing this out in pixels as I make this grid here, we can think of a pixel, although not 100% correct, as a square here that we're sampling from. And each of these pixels, here is our width, here is our height. So what an SDL surface represents is loading up one of these images. We're going to use uh, bitmaps by default to load up and storing the internal properties of whatever's in that image format. Typically, the width, height, and things like the pixel color. So let's go ahead and see how we can use SDL surface in our program. Now, the only real surface that we have right now is our actual window, which of course, if I run this program again, and with dot slash prog, we'll see is a 640 by 480 window. That means there's 640 pixels wide, 480 high. And again, one of these terms that will be important is pitch. That's the length of the row of the pixels. Because if I go back to our diagram here, each one of these pixels is typically made up of three components, sometimes four, a red, green, and blue color value. Usually these range between zero and 255, or if we normalize them between 0, 0.0 and 1.0. And really, all that's doing is telling us the intensity of how red an image is, or how green it is, or how blue that image is. That's all these values mean here. And again, 0 to 255, or 0.0 to 1.0, are the most common ranges for these numbers. So then what the pitch is, is the width times, well, however many components we have. If we have R, G, and B, that would be times three. And that's what the pitch is. And it's a way for us to measure how many bytes are in a row. So how many bytes are in 
a row, that's what the pitch is. Okay, so that is this field here. And again, sometimes you might have an additional attribute here for the opacity. Sometimes you might only have one color channel. We might talk about color channels in another video if that would be useful, but for now, you can just know R, G, B, and A. Okay, so with this in mind, let's go ahead and try to use the STL service. So, in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and follow and see if there's any related commands here. And there is one where we can actually get the surface from the window. So, I'm going to go ahead and do a search for that in the index here. And let me do it from the full index. SDL get window surface. So if I go ahead and do this, this is going to return a pointer to one of those SDL surfaces. And then we'll be able to access the width, height, and other attributes that we want for that particular window. In fact, there's a nice example here showing that we can get a particular screen here, which has been set up as a surface for our window. And then if we want, we could say load the image, uh, some bitmap image, and then paste it onto the screen. So let's go ahead and start with that much and see if we can get this working. So into the code. So what I want to do is set up a surface. I'm going to follow similar to what the directions are in the documentation. SDL surface, the capital S, and it's a pointer. Again, we're doing things sort of C style and the screen. And I'll add a comment here just so we know what's going on. Grab the window surface. And then after we've created our window, we want to get a pointer to whatever that surface is associated with this window. So let's go ahead and do that. So the screen equals SDL get window surface of our window. Okay, so far so good. Let's just go ahead and compile to make sure no mistakes. All right, great. So we've made it this far. And now the next part that we want to do is actually load up an image here. So we're going to need some sort of image. Great place to look for images. It's going to be on Google Images, of course. And I like to use the Creative Commons license just to make sure that we're being safe. I'm going to borrow one of these files here from Blender, which is a 3D program that I think is pretty cool. And go ahead and save this image here. So let's go ahead and just create a folder here for images. And I'll go ahead and save this file. OK, so now if we look here, we have an images folder with our associated file here. All right, and we'll want to hold on to the name there. Now, one small problem here. This is actually supposed to be a bitmap image because we're going to use the SDL load BMP function, which is a specific file format. So let me just go ahead and quickly convert this. OK, so by the power of image editing, I now have this file, and I'll contribute this to the repository so you don't have to bother with it. OK, so now let's go ahead and load up an image here. Now, what is an image? Well, it's also another surface here. So let's go ahead and create that surface for our image. And the image is equal to SDL load BMP in the images directory and the associated bitmap file. OK, so now what do we want to do here? We're going to notice in the documentation that there's now this SDL blit surface command. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So what does this do? Well, let me make this a little bit bigger for you. It uses this function to perform a fast surface coffee, copy to a destination surface. What does that mean? I'm going to take one image or one surface, which is representing some image, and copy it to some other surface. So where do we have another valid surface? Well, that's our window, for instance. So let's go ahead and try this SDL blit surface function. And we can look at the documentation here that we have a source. Again, that's where we're going to copy from. So for example, the image that we loaded. We can use a rectangle to sort of bound this image. For now, I'm just going to make these null to make it easy. Uh, and then the destination, which is going to be our window, and as well a rectangle that is going to represent sort of how much of that image to copy to. But let's just go ahead and follow what we have here to blit our surface to the screen. And I'll do SDL, blit surface, our image, null, we're passing it to the screen, null, 
And technically, once we're done with this image, because we've made a copy of it, we should free it. Again, because we're doing things in C style with pointers, we want to clean up after ourselves. So let me go ahead and free this surface. SDL, free surface, the image, and so on. Okay, so let me go ahead and hide myself here for a moment. The last thing that we want to do is actually then update our window surface. This essentially is going to redraw our window surface. So SDL, update window surface, and the window. Okay, let's try to compile and make sure that we haven't made any mistakes. So far, so good. And I'll try to run the program. And if I bring in our SDL window, we're going to see a portion of that image. Now, the reason I don't see the whole image is because the image was bigger than our actual window. So this is where we would actually want to do a little bit of finagling to uh, sort of uh, scale down our image into the actual window size. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm not really going to worry about that because we'll eventually want to use something known as a texture and then draw that to a rectangle, which can be sort of positioned properly in SDL. But for now, at least you have some understanding of what a surface is and that it's representing different image formats or just pixel data that can be plotted on this either on the window or soon on shapes so we can represent things like different game characters and so on. So I hope this was useful to talk about surfaces. We'll start doing some more stuff with surfaces in a future lesson. All right, take care, folks.